In this lesson, we'll dissect a composite that I've made to study some ways of making selections. To speed things up, I've pre-baked some components such as channels containing selections and pen tool pads, which normally take time and patience to do right. When we're done, we'll end up with a composition that looks like this rough composite. We'll have floated a copy of this dome to allow us to slide a number of these artwork components behind it or below it in the layer stack. We'll add clouds and architectural elements and finally a soft fade of the flag. To preserve maximum flexibility, I've maintained all the layers and most importantly, all the masking of elements is done by adding layer masks, which as we've seen before in this section, can be fine-tuned indefinitely using all kinds of image editing operations that we normally use with raster images. To begin the composite, you need to make a selection of the dome and float a copy like I've done already. The question is, what's the best way to select it? If you're comfortable with using the pen tool, then I would suggest making a path around this crisp shape. Once I've drawn my basic path outline, I like to zoom in considerably so I can edit all the individual control points. I find this to be faster and more effective to do it in this order rather than to fuss over the placement of the individual control points and the path segments as I draw them. On the other hand, if you're one of those people that are intimidated by using the pen tool, you might also make a quick magic wand selection of the sky. Then I'll invert the selection to end up with the dome as the selected object. Then type Q on the keyboard to switch to Quick Mask and edit this mask by painting in the missing pieces using the brush. I'll paint in white to add to the selected areas and paint in black to add to the masked areas. Then type Q to switch back to a selection. Now I've gone ahead and created an alpha channel already to show you what this process does. And as I zoom in, you'll see that there are speckles in the sky region that need to be cleaned up after the fact. And you'll see that the edges need some more work as well. In comparison, this copy was floated by loading the path as a selection. You might actually start out with a cleaner edge depending on the quality of the path that you made. So the next step is to bring in the wall detail and slide it below the copy of this dome. Here we only need the columned wall. So I've gone ahead and made a path for it already. I'm going to go ahead and drag it over into the image and scale it to make it fit and position it where I want. If you find that you need to fine tune these edges further for some reason, then here's what I tend to do. I command or control click on the layer thumbnail to load the transparency mask. Then I click on the layer mask icon to transfer the selection as a layer mask that can be edited as black and white pixels. Now I might run the minimum filter on this mask. If I noticed any fringing around the object, I find that this filter will effectively choke the artwork so it has a cleaner edge. To do this, choose Filter, Other, Minimum. Even at very modest amounts of one or two pixels, this seems to really do the work. I'll do a quick before and after by checking and unchecking the preview button for you to see what it does. And next up is adding the new sky. Here I'll drag the whole layer over and position the clouds where I need them. And then scale if needed. The next thing is to position the clouds layer below the wall layer so it shows through. 
If you look really carefully, you might notice that there is a difference in hue in the color of the sky. So to get the clouds to blend in better, I might use the layer blending options. Double click the layer thumbnail and then work with the this layer slider. Think of it as removing from this layer and we'll be removing shadow and mid-tone details in here. Then to make it appear slightly more realistic, I'll hold down the Option or the Alt key and split the slider and back off to create a smoother transition. Here's a before and after view. It's very subtle but effective for our purpose. And finally, I'll lower the opacity slightly and make it blend in even better.